Here is a video about a stupid building project. Ok, not that stupid maybe, but a project that only makes sense under certain circumstances. Everything started when I found a car DVD player in a thrift store for 4 euro. It caught my eye because it had a secondary display that takes composite video, which meant that I can plug in a video source without hacking into the electronics. Around the same time, a friend gave me a Raspberry Pi 3B. That Raspberry Pi, in combination with the display, obviously screamed for making a little mobile computer. Especially after another thrift store had this sleek looking, black fabric covered wooden box. It had a shiny, company Christmas present type wine set inside. Exactly what I need. I laid out my options. I checked the specs of the display and found that the resolution is terrible. I did not see that before buying the device and just assumed that it would have composite resolution. Here is me from that point in the past discussing options. For a mobile computer I would need a power source. The display wants at least 8 volts, so running everything on let's say a USB power bank doesn't work. I would need to buy a lithium ion battery kit with charging circuit. But that would get me to actually paying real money for that project and I still only have a crappy display. I could of course buy a nice Adafruit Raspberry Pi display, but then I would pay more money. And with that money I could instead buy a cheap or used Android tablet that has better specs than the Raspberry Pi and use it with a Bluetooth keyboard. That would also give me more battery runtime. Or I could buy a used good tablet or even a small laptop or a used Android phone that I then can use with OSB on the go and a keyboard and a mouse. You see where I'm going here. Building a device like that does not make much sense when you have to order new parts for it. So I tried something else. I made the computer basically from junk parts without ordering anything new. Well almost, I did order this wireless keyboard for 12 euro. I can run the Raspberry Pi from this power bank, but the display needs 8 volts. I could order a step up converter, oh wait, I don't want to order stuff. Hmm, I have another power bank and I could technically put both in series. But my gut feeling tells me that putting two step up converters in series is a bad idea. But I could put the battery of that power bank in series with the other power bank and drive the display from that. Although that would make charging difficult. But I have this four sided switch in my junk box that could switch the whole system between charging and discharging. And when I want to run the system from an outlet, I would need a power supply that delivers 5V and 8V. But I can also run the display on 12V and use the guts of this salvaged 2 amps car USB adapter to create the 5V for the Pi and for charging. Ok, some schematics. Note that I don't draw the ground line anywhere. Also, because of potentially short-circuited lithium-ion batteries, this project should get a don't try this at home flag. Here we go. The easy stuff comes first. Raspberry Pi and display are here. And here is the 12 volt to 5 volt converter. This power bank here powers the Raspberry Pi and it remains unmodified, basically. The second power bank has its battery disconnected from the circuit board. There will be a switch to power the system on and off and there is a switch to activate charging. Now to the four sided switch. It has a crucial feature. There is a dead zone in the middle of the travel where none of the contacts is connected. That is important for my use case here because when all contacts would be connected, my battery would be shortened out. In any case, I will give the battery a fuse to be on the safe side. 
The switch has several jobs. In position 1 it connects the battery of that power bank to its charging circuit. It also connects 5 volts from the converter to both charging circuits and to the Raspberry Pi. And it disconnects the power bank from the Pi. In the other switch position, both chargers are disconnected from the power and the Pi runs from that power bank. That power bank is now also in series with the battery to drive the display. A diode makes sure that no power goes in reverse when the 12V input is still on. I have to be careful with that battery though. When I connect its power bank circuit to my bench power supply and drop the input below 3V, the circuit shuts off. That means that the circuit provides under voltage protection for the battery. The battery itself has likely no protection against deep discharging, so I need to order an under voltage protection. Oh wait, darn, no orders. Well, let's build our own circuit then. I start with a MOSFET. I want it to turn off when the input here is below 3.2 volts. The MOSFET's gate is controlled by a PNP Darlington array. The MOSFET is off when the voltage between these two points is below 1.0 volt and it fully conducts at 1.1 volt. In between these values there is an unstable state that I want to avoid. I use a variable voltage divider to set the input level so that the MOSFET shuts off at the right value. However, that divider would also divide the voltage change, so that the unstable range becomes quite large. To fix that, I place the divider in series with some diodes. They create a constant voltage drop that brings the start value close to the 1.1 volt. Then I adjust the variable resistor so that the MOSFET shuts off at the exact right voltage. In that setup, a change of about 0.1 volt is enough to go from completely on to off. That circuit works fine, but I need to make sure that it doesn't come back on immediately after switching off. A resistor across the output pulls the minus up when the MOSFET is off, and a diode between the output and the Darlington input makes sure that a higher input voltage is needed to make the MOSFET go back on. For a stable first start, a capacitor allows the MOSFET to go on once at the beginning. Everything is mounted in the box. I have used 3D printing consequently for small structural parts. I printed the switch holder and these little standoffs for mounting the circuit boards. I also printed the corners to mount the LCD, the separation wall and the switch buttons and a clamp to attach the cable here. And I printed a speaker box that goes under the display. It has the little speakers from the original screen and a third speaker that works as subwoofer. That speaker runs from a separate class D amplifier and that amplifier gets a low pass filtered input from a mix of both channels. The sound of that little 2.1 system is surprisingly nice and adequate for watching videos and for playing games. The display can be switched off with a push button that is connected to the original off button. And I can activate the buttons for the display menu with a wire for the case I ever needed. The Raspberry Pi goes here. I use flexible cables from broken headsets to get the audio and video signals to the display. Two USBs can be reached from outside the box 
And there's also a headphone jack that switches over the audio to the speakers when no cable is plugged in. The receiver for the keyboard is permanently connected to one of the other USB ports of the Raspberry Pi. All cables and electronics are covered up. The gap that is left in the middle is exactly enough to fit the keyboard. I have set the display to composite white mode and the Raspberry Pi frame buffer in a way so that the picture dimensions match. The quality is, well, bad, obviously, for today's standards. On the other hand, videos look actually acceptable and retro games look actually quite good with text being readable and overall nice colors. The battery runtime is about 2 hours of watching YouTube, but recharging is easy and I can run the system even while it charges. So what is the point of this box? I guess retro games, YouTube, MB, Spotify, web radio, stuff like that. Hey, I started this video with the words. Here is a video about a stupid building project. And I'm actually happy with the result and I used the box quite a lot. So long. See you next time. And stay safe.